Good morning, First Baptist. God bless you. God keep you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms 147, praise ye the Lord. For it's good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. Pray with me. Merciful God, our Father, how thankful we are that you are with us this day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the provisions you have made for us this day and blessings that you have in store for us this day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all those who will participate in this worship experience. Now, Lord, you are the guest of honor. Honor us with your presence. Bless us as only you can. We welcome you in this worship experience. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, 
Good morning, First Baptist Church. We would like to welcome all guests and visitors that are here visiting with us today. We would also like to welcome those that are guests that are on our virtual um, Zoom church service for today. These are your announcements. First Baptist Church expresses our condolences to the family of our own Sister Myrtle Sales. Sister Sales went home to be with the Lord on Thursday, September 10, 2020. Services will be held at 1 p.m. on Wednesday, September 16th at Harrods Brothers Funeral Home and Crematory. Visitation will be 10.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Wednesday at the funeral home. Sister Sales was 98 and, one, and was one of our oldest members of the church. Please keep that family in your prayers. We also have um, from Sister Geneva Benson, she wants to thank First Baptist Church for um, prayers um, in her time of bereavement. Um, we do have coming up next Sunday, September 20th, um, our church anniversary. We will be celebrating 187 years for our church anniversary next Sunday, which will be a virtual worship service. Our theme is Wait on the Lord, and the scripture is coming from Psalms 27 and 14. Our guest for next Sunday will be Reverend Donald Townsend, from the pastor of Polk Memorial Baptist Church in Versailles, Kentucky. Please let's not forget that we have um, Bible study and Sunday school, Sunday school for adults and children start at 9.45. Um, for adults, that number can be reached at 909-318-7246. And for our youth, that number is 701-802-5421 with the access code 777-836. On Tuesday evenings at six o'clock, we do have our Bible study. And also on Thursday mornings at 7 a.m., we have our prayer line. And those also can be reached at 909-318-7246. Um, those are all the announcements that I have for today. Please, let's keep our sick and shut in in your prayers. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray for our church family. We need to pray for those that are in our city, state, and our nation. Everyone, please have a blessed day and an awesome week. These are your announcements. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Uh, just like to say good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, this is praying time. Uh, just want to bow our heads. Uh, first off, just want to give my honor to my Lord and Savior for just waking me up this morning. Uh, it might be a gloomy and rainy day, but the sun still is going to shine. And that's the S-O-N. Sun's going to shine. But we just want to come to you and just thank you, my Lord and Savior. Just thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. We're just, we're just living in a, 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 a world full of trouble right now, my Lord and Savior, but we know that you are an on-time God and you still stand on the throne. You stand on the throne waiting for us to call you and you got control of everything. I'm just here to, I'm just here to, to bear a witness that you are a good God because you gave me 59 years. You didn't have to wake me up this morning, but, but you, you, you continue to wake me up because you got a purpose for me. You got a purpose for everybody. So you are, you are a loving God. You are on time, God. We just got a lot of things going on in this world. We got that pandemic that is still continuing to go on. Then we got flu season that's coming around. Then we got the fires that's going in the West Coast. We got the hurricanes that's going down in the East Coast. But God, you are still in control. I'm glad, I'm glad you, you got an open line who I can call. 
you you just just like in in, in Psalms 61 1 you said hear hear my cry God listen to my prayer so he does listen to our prayers that's our connection just we just want to continue just to lean on you Lord it's just so much it's so much stuff I it's so much stuff I want to just uh, explain God or just just bring up to the forefront because we've got a lot of things going on one thing our, our sick and shed in list is just getting longer and longer just want to pray for the names that I know right now that's in my mind if I miss anybody it's in my mind not my heart just want to pray for uh, brother JD Smith just want to pray for Deacon S Marsha Young just want to pray for Deacon Young we want to pray for sister Helen Happy we want to pray for sister Odom we want to pray for Brother Odom. We want to pray for Sister Sarah Moore. We want to pray for Karen Moore. We want to pray for Leon Moore. We want to pray for uh, Deaconess Townsend. We want to pray for Deacon Townsend. We want to pray for Deaconess McIntosh. We want to pray for Deacon McCoy. We want to pray for Deacon Jacobs. Those are all the people who I got in my mind. If I miss anybody, it's, it's, it's in my mind, not my heart. We also want to pray for the bereavement family. We just want to pray for the, the sales family. Just to go over and just give a community to Sister Sales. She's just to enlighten me, just going over there. Just want to still pray for the, the, the Davis, Tim Davis. We want to pray for, still want to pray for the Catherine Davis. These, these were, some, these were some, some warriors. You can see that Christian-like behavior in these folks. They, they gone to a good place. They left, they, they left a, a high bar for all of us. Us as Christian folks, we got to continue to love one another. We got to continue to lean on one another. We got to continue to just just do it all together. Do we want to pray for all our auxiliaries, our deacons, our trustees, just all the just everybody? I don't want to miss nobody. But Lord, we just we need you, Lord. We need you right now, Lord. You are right now, God. I'm glad that I know you for myself. We got we got you got to lean on Him. You got you, you got to read His Word. His word is the truth. You know, the word of the world is forever changing, but he stays the same. Thank you, Lord. Just want to pray for pray for our minister. Pray, pray for Minister Williams to, to come in here and just to give us that fire, just that blessed assurance, just to just to just to relive or just to let us know that God is still here. He's the living God. Just still want to pray for a uh, 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 Reverend Tim Taylor for his his obedience. We want to pray for a, a, a ministry of music, Dr. McCutcheon. These are people that stayed on the on the post. See, we we, we don't have no leader. It's, it's, it's easy to leave, but you know that, that takes a special person to stay in, stay on your post, because you know the Lord has been good to you. Every one of us. Let's have a good service. God has been good to us. All these in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 
everybody bless the Lord. Wave their hands. Say amen. Say bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. We bless your name, Father. We thank you. Good morning, church. Our scripture today comes from Luke chapter 22, verses 31 to 33. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fall not, fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Bless the readers, hearers, and doers of the Lord's word. Amen. morning church will a man rob God yet ye have robbed me but say where wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offering ye are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even this whole nation bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here within saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. In these trying times in this pandemic, we can't go traditionally, so we can do, you can mail your offerings to 100 Clinton Street, 4106, or you can go online to give a fly and select First Baptist Church and do your offering there. Pray with me. Lord, bless this offering that we received today, Lord. Lord, bless the ones that wanted to give but wasn't able to give so that they may be able to give at a later time. These are all the blessings that I ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
God is my all in all. First Baptist Church, let us welcome Reverend Taiwan Williams from Little Flock Missionary Baptist Church of Louisville, Kentucky. Wave at him and let him know we appreciate him being here today. He didn't think it was robbery to come and give us God's word. So Reverend Williams, give us the word, please. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. The song said that God is my all in all. And that, that ought to be all of our uh, uh, proclamation that God is my all in all. When I was feeling sick, he was my all. He was my doctor. When I didn't, when I didn't think I, when I didn't think I could make it, he was my all. When I was unemployed, my God, he was my all. You ought to put your hands together right now and give God some praise because he's been your all. Even through this pandemic, God has been your all because he is a mighty God and he is worthy. I said he's worthy. I said he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. It is so good to be with you all again this morning. Um, I, I thank God for the invitation uh, that came from uh, my good friend, uh, Deacon Robinson. I thank God for, for him. I thank God for you all uh, uh, reaching down to the, in the ghetto of Louisville, Kentucky, 
and asking a, a little old preacher like me to share the word of the Lord with you all. I pray that all is well. Um, and, and, and I know that we're not able to go into the physical building of the church, uh, but the truth of the matter is that we are the church. And the Bible says that one, where one or two are gathered, that there will be the Lord and he will come and he will show up. Amen. Amen. He will be in the midst. And I'm a witness to that. Amen. I'm not going to be a long, uh, be before you long. Uh, if you would, please turn with me to the book of Luke. Turn with me to the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter. And I know the, I know the deacon, uh, the good deacon uh, read the scripture once before, but I'm going to read it for you one, one more time. Luke, the 22nd chapter, uh, beginning with verse number 31, where it simply said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brothers and i'm gonna stop right there or verse number 32 simply says but i have prayed for you that your faith not fail and when you have returned to me go back and strengthen your brothers and i just want to speak to you just for a second on this good sunday morning on the topic of what to do when the devil attacks. What to do when the devil attacks. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you right now, giving you all the honor, give you all the glory and give you all the praise, not for anything that you've done for us, but just for being God and being God all by yourself. Now, dear Heavenly Father, I just ask that you use me as your vessel. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you take the driver's seat and I'll move over to the passenger seat. You take the wheel, dear Heavenly Father, so that these, your people, may hear a word from you. Give me the, the type of preaching power that preaches with clarity and with boldness, dear Heavenly Father. Open the ears, minds, and hearts of these your people, dear Heavenly Father, so that again, they may hear a word from you. All these things we ask in your son, Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. What to do when the devil attacks? With almost everything being shut down because of this pandemic i've been able to catch up on some of my nature shows and typically the type of shows that i like to watch are the ones where the animals are hunting i watch the eagles and the big birds hunt I watch the lions and the other cats hunt. And a few weeks ago, I was able to watch Shark Week. And so I was able to watch the sharks hunt. I love to watch the animals hunt. But a few days ago, I found myself fixated on the insects. And in particular, it was the ant that I found myself watching. And I found out that ants are amazing little insects. I found out that ants are really strong and that they can lift about 20 times their weight. I found out that there are about 12,000 different species of ants all over the world and that ants only have one queen 
for each colony. But perhaps the most important thing that I learned about ants is how they always work as a team. In order for them to have anything, they work as a community to get it. Ants work together as a community to build what ants would call these lavish underground living quarters. Ants work together as, as an army to fight off any attacking insects. Ant colonies have a sense of togetherness. Ants have a sense of interconnectedness. Ants have a sense of community. And when you look at our communities, you will see that we have lost our sense of togetherness. We have lost our sense of community, that we have lost our sense of interconnectedness. And even in the church, you see how divided we are, how individualistic we have become, how selfish we have become in the church. The church mentality, the mentality of a lot of people that come to the church is that I've got mine and that you better do the best that you can to get yours. To the extent where we have lost the responsibility of communal concern. We have lost having the mentality of being my brother and my sister's keeper. We have taken on a more selfish role, a more self-centered, a more greedy mentality, even in the church. When you begin to read your Bible, you understand that even from the beginning of time that God does things by community, that God does things by relationship, that God does things by interconnectedness. And Jesus, once again, in this particular passage, gives us another example of the responsibility of community. Now, I know from just reading this particular scripture, it looks like Jesus is giving Simon a warning that the devil is coming after him. It, if you were to do a surface reading of this text, then it looks like Jesus is giving Simon a heads up that the devil has him on his radar. But when you put the text in the context of the text, then you will discover that Jesus is up to something much bigger. In the context of the text, they are sitting around what we call the Lord's table. They have been in the upper room having the Lord's Supper. This is a supper that represents community. This supper that represents unity. This supper that represents oneness. And if you were to read the previous verses that I have read for you, then you know that they are in a discussion that Jesus is not a part of, where they are talking about who's going to be the next leader. Read it when you get a chance. They know that Jesus is on his way out. They know that Jesus is about to take leave of them. And they're all wondering who's going to be the next leader. Who's going to be the next one in charge? Who is going to be the next captain? After all, Jesus has not chosen who his successor is. Jesus has not appointed anyone to be his replacement. So nobody knows who's going to be the next leader. And as often as often happens, whenever your priority is power, you always cancel community. Whenever your priority is who's in charge, you will find yourself tampering with your God-given assignment. Jesus ear hustles, and here's what they're talking about. And he begins to warn them about not being like the Pharisees, about not like being like the Gentiles who have lowered authority over them. But they are so busy 
trying to figure out who's going to be in power that they don't hear what Jesus is saying to them. Don't miss it. They are sitting around the table that represents community. They are sitting around the table that represents unity. They are sitting around the table that represents oneness. But their argument has the potential to cancel their community. So Jesus takes this opportunity to put out a warning about what they are doing around the table. And he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. Now, I know it doesn't sound as if I said much there, but Reverend Taylor, study, I've been studying the Greek. I've been reading a little bit of the Greek. And in this particular verse, Jesus uses two different Greek words. He uses a singular and a plural. Here's what Jesus really says. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as wheat. I know that's poor English there, but I'm, I got the mic right now, so that's what I'm going to use. He says, he says, Simon has asked for y'all, but I have prayed for you. Don't miss it. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as wheat, but I prayed for you. I'm going to say it one more time for the person in the back that didn't get it. I'm going to say it one more time. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for all of you, but I didn't pray for all of you. I only prayed for one of you. Now, I know that after reading this text that, that, that there were some questions. I had some questions. I had some questions. I had to ask the Holy Spirit. I said, if the devil is after all of them, then why does Jesus only pray for one of them? If the devil is after everybody, then why does Jesus only pray for one somebody? I had to ask the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said to me that the reason he's praying for him is because he named him the rock. He's the one that's the strong one. He's the one that's the powerful one. He's the one that's got more sense than everybody else. And he says, Jesus says, Simon, I'm praying for you because when the devil comes to attack y'all, he will, that you will be the first one to get up. And after you get up, I need you to go back and get everybody else that you are responsible for. Because not everybody is going to get up as quick as you did. So, Simon, you got to get up and you got to go back and get everybody else. He says, Simon, you've got to, you've got to keep it together. Watch this. Because if the devil gets you, he'll get y'all. So I need you to get yourself together because you've got too much at stake. Because if he gets you, he'll mess up everything. And that's my Sunday morning word this morning while we're going through this COVID outbreak to some husband, to some father, to some mother, to some wife that the devil is trying to use this COVID outbreak to take out our leaders, but that Jesus is holding you responsible for getting yourself together and for covering everybody else that the devil is coming after our leaders. He's coming after our mothers. He's coming after our fathers. He's coming after our church leaders, after our ministry leaders, after our, after our government leaders. But I dare you to look at somebody and you tell them that I've got too much at stake. I cannot let the devil have my family. I cannot let the devil have my ministry. I cannot let the devil have my church. I cannot let the devil have my friendships and I'm going to get myself together so that he can't take down all of us. The devil cannot 
have our leaders. That's why we pray for our leaders. We pray for the strength of our leaders because we know that if the devil tries to get them, that he'll get all of us. Amen. Amen. Y'all let me know that y'all understand what I'm saying. Y'all send me some hearts. Y'all wave your hand or something. Y'all let me know that y'all understand what I'm talking about. Y'all nod your head or something so y'all let me know that y'all understand. In this text, I've got three quick things that I'm going to give you when you feel like the devil is after you. Here's the first thing. The first thing that the text is trying to teach us is don't let the old you take out what the new you is trying to accomplish. Um, don't let the old you keep you from reaching the goal that the new you has set for 2020. Okay, let me put it to you like this. Um, I don't care how many scriptures you know, how much Greek you studied or how many hymns you memorize, there is an old you. You can read the Bible from cover to cover. You could have been in the church for many gen generations, but there is an old you. And where we oftentimes struggle at is that when we're baptized, our old you doesn't disappear. Our old you is just now under subjection, but the old you does not disappear. In other words, there is, some, there is some old stuff that we like that we shouldn't necessarily like. That's the nature of temptation. Temptation suggests that when something is put in front of you, that it gives you the option to say yes when you should really say no. And the thing about the devil is, is that he customizes temptation. Y'all come on and go with me here. He does not put in front of you what doesn't make you weak because the devil puts things in front of you that he knows is going to tempt you. That's why you've got to be careful about how you talk about other people's situation because the only reason you don't have that situation is because that's not your weakness. Well, that's all fine and good, brother preacher, but where do you see that in the text? Well, I'm glad you asked. Look at the text. Jesus says, Simon, Simon, you can stop right there. Simon, Simon, we got a problem. Simon, you can stop right there. Remember when Jesus took a survey and he said, who do men say that I am? Remember, some said, and, and, and the, the disciples, they, they answered, they said, some said you're Elijah, some said you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Y'all remember that, y'all Bible readers. I know y'all Bible readers. I know y'all remember that, that text. Uh, and, and, and he said, that's fine, but who do you say that I am? That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? And Remember, Simon at that time answered. He said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And remember, Christ said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Y'all remember that scripture. I know y'all do. And remember, Jesus said, watch this. You shall no longer be called Simon. Watch it. He says, you shall no longer be called Simon. You should be called Petrus. Y'all remember that scripture, right? Now I have a problem with this part of the story because Jesus calls him by the very name that he said don't call him by. I don't know if Jesus has forgotten or if he's got amnesia or something or because he's the one that said don't call him Simon. And then Jesus in that in, in this very story calls him by the name he said, don't call him by. I said, Jesus, I need some help with this one. I'm going to First Baptist of Frankfurt. They're some of the smartest people on the planet. They're, and they're going to have some questions that they're going to ask. Why did you call him Simon when you said to call him? You said call him Peter. 
because Peter means rock. Peter represents the person that can hear divine revelation. Peter represents the person that has spiritual insight. And he said, that's the point. I don't need to talk to Peter. I need to talk to Simon because I need Peter to know that I don't care how strong you are, there's still some Simon in you. And you can sit there and look as cute as you want to, but there's some Simon left on the inside of you. If someone catches you on the wrong day at the wrong time and says the wrong thing, then they'll see that there's some Simon left in you. I know I'm on it this morning. Y'all can sit there and look as cute as you want to, but the devil has a way. He has a way of trying to push your simonic buttons. He has a way of trying to push your, of, of trying to get under your simonic skin. But the good news of the text is that Jesus is praying for the Simon in you. Oh, I, I knew I have somebody here. Somebody in their nose and somebody's excited that Jesus is praying. Do you know why that should have blessed you? Because people will put your assignment on Facebook. People will put your assignment in the blog. People will put your assignment on Instagram. But I'm so glad that I serve a Savior who will not only pray for the Simon in me, but he will pray that I get over and I go through that Simonic experience that I'm going to have. He will pray that I will, I do not have those Simonic experiences anymore because he'll pray for you. He won't call you. He won't, he won't, uh, he won't put you on front street like your friends will. They'll put your Simonic experiences on Facebook and in the blog, but you ought, to, you ought to clap, you ought to rejoice, you ought to say hallelujah, because God will pray. Jesus will pray for the Simon in you. Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. I'm, I'm excited because I know that I got some people, some so-called friends that'll tell everybody else when I have a Simonic experience, but that we have a savior that not only wants the best for you, but that he will pray for you when the devil comes to attack you. Amen. Here's my second point. I ain't going to be long, be, be, be long in front of you. Here's my second point. Now, what I don't want you to miss is, is what Jesus is praying for. Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, watch it, that your faith not fail. Y'all missed it right there. Y'all missed it right there. He said, Simon, Simon, what I'm praying for is the faith that I've taught you, that it doesn't fail when the battle comes. Simon, the devil will, will try real hard to make you forget what you already know. So my prayer is when it gets rough, that your faith will stand up, that, that, that you'll remember what, you've all right, what you already know about faith. That's why you're coming to Bible study and that you're coming to small groups and you come into Sunday school. It's, that's why it's so important because when you come to Bible study and when you come to Sunday school and when you come to prayer meetings, that's when you're getting your faith strengthened. See, a lot of times we want to pray for the wrong things. We want to pray for the we want to pray for the new house, or we want to pray for the new car, or we want to pray for a new boo, or you want to pray for a new bay. But I, I came to the club that you need to pray for your faith. Because when the battle comes, the devil is not after your house, he's already got one. He's not after your car, he's already got one. He's not after your bay, he already has one. But he's after your faith. Because if he knows that he gets your faith, then he'll get you. But I come to declare that, that you need to start praying that your faith is strengthened. You need to come, you need to come praying that God strengthens your faith, that when he takes you through something, that your faith is strengthened, and that you don't worry about the new house, that you don't worry about the new car, that you don't worry about getting a bay, but you worry about your strength, you the strength of your faith. Because when your faith is strengthened, God will provide everything else. When your strength, when your faith is strengthened. Everything else falls in line. 
Amen. Amen. Y'all say amen in here in this place. Because I know y'all are some faith people. What With everything that you all have went through, I know that you all are some faith people. The faith that you all have been doing, the faith that you have at First Baptist, I know that you know the strength and that you know that the faith is your faith that is important. Amen. Amen. And the thing about it is, see, I, I read this the other day. I read this the other day. See, when God, when God prays for you, he blocks the devil's intentions. I'm going to say that again. See, when God prays for you, when Jesus prays for you, he blocks the de what the devil has for you. Do you know why that should have shouted you? Because, because when, when, when you, when you should have lost your mind, in the midst of that unemployment, when you should have lost your mind, when you was going through those relationship problems, when you lost your mind, when you should have lost your mind in the midst of not being able to have any food in your house, God was praying for you. Jesus was praying for you at that time. And you know what? The devil was coming after you, but Jesus was praying for you and he blocked. He blocked the devil's intentions. I wish I had a witness in here. God blocked it. I wish I had somebody this one who could just put your hands up and say, God, I thank you that you prayed for me even when the devil had something planned for me, that you prayed for me even when the devil was going to attack me, that you prayed for me. When the devil came after your family, Jesus was praying for you. Amen. This is my last point, my last point. In this point, Jesus shows us his prophetic power. That word prophetic means having the ability to predict what will happen in the future. He says, watch this, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you here we go, right here. And then he says, and when you return. Y'all missed it right there. I'm going to go through it one more time. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith not fail. And here it is right here. It was plain as day in the scripture. And I have read through this scripture a million times and never seen it. He says, and when you return, not suppose, not if, not I think, Jesus says, and when you return. Now, what makes this prophetic is because scholars suggest that what Jesus is talking about is when Simon denies Jesus three times. That ain't happened yet. So what Jesus is saying is, is yeah, the devil is going to attack you, but you're going to survive it because I've already taken care of it. In other words, Simon, you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret because even though Satan is going to come after you, but I've already fought that battle for you and you're going to come away with the victory. I wish I had a witness in here. What that means for you is, is if you have the faith, then you know that God has already worked it out. I wish I had a witness in here that God will work it out. That's my last point. If you don't understand anything else, that I preached to you this morning. It's to know that God will work it out. I'm a witness this morning that God will work it out. If you need a job, then God will work it out. If you need to pay a bill, then God will work it out. You need your child to get right this morning. God will work it out. You need a healing in your body. God will work it out. You need a promotion on your job. God will work it out. Is there anybody in here who can say that God will work it out? He will work it out. God will 
work it out outside your neighbor right now and tell them that God will work it out. So I ain't got to wait till he works it out. I can shout right now because God will work it out. Is there anybody in here that can say that, God, I don't know, I don't have much to give you, but I thank you for working it out. So if all I have is my praise, then I'm going to praise you right now for working it out. God will work it out. Work out my children. God will work it out. Work out my marriage. Because God will work it out. Work out my money. Work out my finances. Because God will work it out. Work out my sickness. Because God will work, work out my job. Because God will work it out. Work out the job. Somebody on their job needs to work it out. Because I'm here to tell you that God will work out my parents right now. God will work it out even in the midst of this COVID. God will work it out. Work out the cancer. God will work it out. I'm a witness that God will work it out. And that's all I came to tell you, that God will work it out. If there are any witnesses in here that can say that God will work it out, you ought to give him a praise tonight. You ought to give him a praise this morning because God will work it out. Give him your heart and God will work it out. Give him your soul this morning and God will work it out because God will. I said God will. God will work it out. Well, how do you know that he'll work it out? Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus went to a cross called Calvary. They drove nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. And he hung there. And he died. He died all day Friday. And all day Saturday. And all night Saturday night. But early, God did work it out. Because he got up with all power in his hands. Won't he do it, church? I said, won't he do it, church? Won't he do it, church? I'm a witness that he can do it because he got up on Sunday morning. He got up with all power. And I know that he can do it because God will work it out. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And may God keep you. Uh, God will. If you don't understand anything else, that ought to be your testimony because you've been through some rough times. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you've been through a rough time. You've been through a hard time. You've been through a time where Satan was attacking you. He was attacking your health. He was attacking your finances. He was attacking your marriage, but God worked it out. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I couldn't tell you that he, he could work it out if, if I didn't go through troubles myself. I know that God will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And that reminds me of one of those old hymns. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. He will work it out. It will work out for your good. It will work out for you. The scripture tells us that all things work out for the good of those that love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll turn it back over to the hands of our uh, uh, Reverend Taylor. God bless you and God keep you, but he will work it out. I'm a witness.
Thank you, Reverend Williams, for that encouraging word. And I know for myself, God will work it out. And I just want to say thank you. And if maybe there's someone here who been going through and they just do not know that God will work it out for them, this is your opportunity. God's been working it out for your good. You might not, you might not feel it, but God is working it out for your good. I've been through the storms. I've been through the rain. I've cried late at night, but God has worked it out. Yes. No matter what you're going through, God will work it out for you. And right now, maybe there's someone here who does not know the love of Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. You can come by letter, Christian experience, or baptism. You can call 502-223-5152. And someone will come and talk to you and pray with you. And whatever you're going through, just know God is there. Or maybe you've just been dealing with some stuff and you just need someone to pray with you. You don't have to worry. God is working it out. But you can also call 502 223-5152. So if there's anyone who is wanting to either join First Baptist or you just looking for prayer, call 502-223-5152. Give us your hand. Give God your heart. Uh, Brother McCutcheon, will you play us some music?
Thank you, Reverend Williams, for reminding us through all that we're going through that he is working it out. So even when the enemy attacks, God is working it out. Thank you. I, I, I can yell it all week long, no matter what attack comes my way. If the devil, you have no power. God is working it out. And I thank you for that word of encouragement. Because we are going through, it's been a while since we had an under shepherd, but God is working it out. Don't give up. Don't turn around. Keep pushing forward. God is working it out. And that's what we needed to hear. Some of us are probably feeling frustrated over the amount of time. Some of us are feeling frustrated because we feel like we're just drifting without a rudder. But God is working it out. And I just want to thank you once again, Reverend Williams, for that encouraging, uplifting message. And if all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to close out in prayer. Brother McCutcheon, if you be so kind, will you play Holy, Holy, Holy? Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for reminding us that you are working it out. Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping us in the midst of the storm. Heavenly Father, bless us as we leave this worship experience that we never leave your side. Hold us, keep us as only you can and only you will. Heavenly Father, when we go on through our storm, remind us that you are working it out. May God bless us, and may God keep us, and may his grace forever smile upon us. And as we end this service, keeping you first in all things. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and ask it all. Amen. You are his sister.